little bit of a young LA photo shoot. For the drop on August 8th, we got, you know, Ant. He's currently shirtless, and we're gonna see what we can do. There he is. All right, we're here in Asbury. We're gonna shoot the ugly ass pants, the shorts, everything you guys saw. Cute. Cute montage. I don't think he realizes this for my vlog. Not gonna lie, it kinda looks like Shayna. How you feeling? Hot, it's fucking really hot. I wore white for that reason. Yeah, why aren't you sweating? Because I don't have hyperhidrosis. No, hyperhidrosis, is like, it's for my hands, which have been dry actually lately. Yeah? But like sweating in general. Mm. I mean, my back is sweaty. Okay, that counts, that counts. All right, next up. Okay. What you've been waiting for, the editing breakdown. Obviously, I'm not going to go super in-depth yet about the terms and everything like that because I don't want to end up sounding like this. Now I hit the rim, it's boom, uh, click and go back this way, boom, here, here, click and go that way, boom, that way, click here and go back this way. So what I'll do is I'm going to break this down into four easy steps with step one being organized. Now, when I say organize, I mean that's for the footage you just transfer to your computer. What you want to do is you want to almost put each section of the video or bit is what I like to call it into its own folder. That way, when you eventually import it into your editing software, it's already in each folder. And that way you don't have to constantly go through one main folder just trying to pick and choose like clips. Granted, if that's what you want to do, you can. But for me, organizing it makes it a hell of a lot faster. Step two, we have the first round. When I say the first round, it's the first round of cuts. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go through your timeline and you wanna sift through all the key parts. Delete any dead space. One huge thing I do is I delete dead space if it's in between speaking dialogues or even if I'm using the word like and um or any other little word over like over excessively. Just helps the flow of conversation go a little bit smoother it might not be the biggest noticeable difference, but for me it is, and that is something I always like to keep my eye out for. And then once you finish your first round of cuts, it's gonna look a little something like this. And then once it's there, you're moving on to step three, the second round or adjustments. Now, this is the round where you go through, you fix any audio, you fix the color grade. Say if you play back a certain sequence from A to B and it's just not flowing right, that's where you take that little extra time to like tweak and try to make it flow best as possible. One major thing I'm always conscious of, especially when it comes to color grading, is you do not want to over color your footage because then it's gonna look noisy, the banding might happen, and it's not a fun process all around. The best way to avoid that is just to shoot it in your camera correctly for the exposure, or if you're shooting an S-Log3 with an Ace, like any Sony camera, make sure you are exposure meter like plus 1.3 or plus 0 0.7. And then for C-Log3, it's kind of just, I've kept it anywhere around just a zero reading or up to plus 0.7, but that's personal preference. I don't know if that's right. Then after you finish your second round, it's gonna start looking like it's all coming together. And then once you're done with that, you're on to your fourth and final step. Well, my fourth and final step, the most important one in my opinion, sound design. Sound design is something I've always lacked. And I would say over the last few months, it's something I've very, I very much have been prioritizing just because that's Whenever I watch movies, whenever I watch, like, go to the movies and watch, like, say, for example, Oppenheimer, the sound design on that movie, there's no dead silence, and if there is, it's intentional. And even then, there's, like, a room tone or just, like, a distorted, like, like, ringing. I don't know how to explain it, but it makes it feel so much more immersive. And then you also want to make sure your sound design matches the mood or the theme of the video. You don't want to put like a like a Barbie song on top of a fitness montage. It, unless if you do, that's fine. But in my head, it just doesn't really work like that. Now, obviously, there are a lot of effects, effects, transitions that you could always possibly use. However, I am 
a fan of using minimal transitions, like overly edited ones, just because you never see those in movies, unless if it's like CGI. They always have the motion in the frame or they have seamless cuts where you don't even notice. Like it's just an angle change, but like you're just locked in. So something I'm definitely more aligned with and something I enjoy doing more than just like in the past, like especially when I first started, I would just throw on a glitch transition here, glitch transition there. I would put like a warp zoom, zoom out, build in, build out. And it's when I look back at the videos now, I kind of cringe. So the most important thing though. So now once all of that's done is the export settings. Now I use Final Cut Pro and for Final Cut Pro, it's best to put it under H.264. That way, if you do the source Apple ProRes, which you can, it just takes up a lot more space. And in terms of efficiency and just space saving, not worth the time doing the, the source code ProRes. But if you do want to, you can. And then just make sure you remember where you exported it to. Then have fun uploading your video. I hope that was five minutes. That's kind of my quick guide to editing. I know there's a lot of people that want to see like a like a live stream esque um, of me editing, but realistically, I feel like that's not enough, and it's just very boring. Just because I literally sit there, eyes glued to the frame, for hours on end, and I don't know if that's something someone would want to watch. All right, so I hope you guys like that. Um, that's the best in-depth way I can explain how I edit. Obviously, of course, there are ways you could do it through like, like almost if you're like live streaming OBS, something like that, where it like screen records your recording. Honestly, if I had more time, I definitely would pertain or I would like to indulge in something like that. However, given the constraints and given the lackluster of planning, index cards and A roll with B roll is the way to go for now. But right now we are iron rev. How are you feeling? Good. How are you? Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. How's this? Uh uh it's good yeah just a little bit yeah yeah you had a long workout though just did the front of your calves not burn uh not like, really no do you yes because i do the tibia you know so my tibias are i got weak tibias yeah i got weak got tibias. <laughs> how much more cardio you got uh eight minutes that's not bad yeah i just worked out for like two hours <sighs> with the posing and the abs at the end it was yeah. probably like over two hours Fuck. then i ate and then did. this for 30 minutes so yep. we'll clean the gym for like 30 minutes. Not bad. And then we'll film. What's your train? Uh, push. The second push day. What's tomorrow? Uh, pull. Hamstrings and back. You deadlifting? No.